Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the light of your love that's just uh, poured out upon us daily as we open ourselves to you. Thankful for the ways that we can bless the world with your love, Lord Jesus, and even through these tangible gifts of offerings that they would use to bless the world, uh, to bring others that they might know you. And so again, bless these gifts, bless this offering. Church. And what does that mean? 
So this has kind of intrigued me as I've been uh, thinking about the community groups, and some of you are going through that, and maybe if you haven't purchased the book already, you might want to even do that, because uh, Max Cato is a great author, and it's just great devotional reading. So uh, if you're going in a group, or even if you're not in a group or can't participate in one, uh, maybe find that book, because it's a great book. And uh, I've kind of captured that theme of being a lighthouse church, and our name Hope is right in that title as well. And uh, we're going to be looking at this theme over the next few weeks. Uh, what are the characteristics of a lighthouse church? It's bringing the light of Jesus into the world. Uh, keeping the urgency on, uh, on the light, on bringing that light and, and bringing that hope to the world around us. And uh, I love this picture uh, that I just, I'm not a great photographer, but I uh, was out here on Thursday night. We had a prayer group that met, the worship team was going, and uh, I was just about to leave. And I go, our lighthouse. <laughs> As you can see it, if there's some activity going on in here during the evenings, right? It's shining pretty bright. It's pretty neat. You can see that light. And uh, it her captures the essence of what I want to focus on of uh, being that lighthouse church. And uh, you know, thinking about the light of God, thinking about the light of God's word. Right? His word is a, a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And just thinking about how God's word will illuminate every step. And would just be the, the driver for us to continue to bring God's love. As we look to his word, that's what God is about. Revealing himself, bringing his presence and uh, knowledge of him to all the world. Uh, again, I'm, I'm highlighting this book, that uh, Max and Cato book, Unshakable Hope. And uh, uh, these are the core things that I'm going to capture through some of the reading of the book. Not in any specific order, chapter by chapter. But just these are the things that just stood out to me that I'll focus on. Uh, today, in this overview, and then over the next uh, seven weeks that follow, what does a lighthouse church do? It values each person, has joy. That will be our celebration with Pastor Doug. That will be on the 21st, the Joy Sunday, okay? Uh, gives grace. We'll talk about that on Reformation Sunday, end of October. You'll hear more about grace being the, the thing that motivates us, that God has given us. Now, praise, overcomes the enemy, is free, and keeps the end in mind. We always know. We know the end of the story, right? Jesus reigns. Jesus wins. So keeping those uh, those kind of <coughs> ideas ahead, but uh, um, just want to remind us of kind of where we've been too. Um, oh, sneaking ahead. Uh, uh, last week, uh, Pastor Doug talked about one of the illustrations he gave. You remember the rescue illustration for those of you that were here again? Yeah, like to be on that focus on that. Uh, Followology and doing everything, but keeping that uh, message in mind, of doing whatever it takes to follow Jesus, uh, doing whatever it takes to rescue someone. Meaning he had to, he had to just dive into the water and do all that he could to rescue that that person that was struggling out in that lake, the river out in, uh, in Virginia. Um, so I found out through Pastor Doug that he, he has a uh, he's like embraced the water, right? He likes the water. He likes to swim. Uh, now, I have a little different take on water. I like the water as well. Uh, Pastor Doug said he'd never get in the ocean. He'd never swim. But uh, I like the ocean. And you can see me with some uh, kids from our church. Uh, we'll uh, surf Saturday uh, down in Southern California. So uh, you can see the sun shining. It's nice and warm. <laughs> Not warm, warm, but it's warmer. You can see the wetsuit there. Oh, there we were. That was my last surf Saturday that I had every week, every Saturday with the guys. And see... Not even needing a wetsuit. That was a beautiful day down at Doheny, down in that Dana Point. And then things changed. Me and my son. <laughs> there we are. At, uh, I'm not sure exactly where it was. I think that was, uh, we went a few different places. I think that was uh, Newport, uh, at the coast. But what do we got? We got hoods on, we got full wetsuit, we got gloves, we got boots, and uh, you keep the chat. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I want you to think about this image because water often connotes a different kind of rescue. Why right? do you have lifeguards there? You need to save and help those who are in any kind of distress. But uh, just think about this person in your life. Maybe it's been a physical, tangible rescue, but have you ever needed to be rescued? Maybe it's been a different type of rescue that you've needed in your life. And somebody who's there for you uh, to bring you out of a, let's just say, a perilous, difficult situation. That image is powerful about rescue, what we all need. And even today, what do you experience? Things just moving right along, right? Just smooth sailing, so to speak. Or maybe you're today in a bit of a difficult time, whether it's been with a relationship.
relationship issues, job issues, uh, family things, and even spiritually. Are you going through a time where you're wrestling with faith? Those are honest things and honest questions that I pray that we can get church, that hears one another, that supports one another, that prays for one another, and that can be that kind of beacon of light and hope, even in the midst of challenging times. I'd like to show you this little uh, homemade video I made. This was about a year or so ago. But I think that kind of illustrates this point of how we need uh, one another, we need rescue, and I'll let the little, the little story clip do the rest. Hey, like today, life is going well. You got the sun on your face, sun on your back, and you're just enjoying what life is bringing you. And those days are good. But you know, sometimes uh, things happen differently than we expect. And literally, that wave hits that comes from nowhere that tumbles you and takes you where you never thought you'd have to go. Never a very enjoyable experience. Wow. Sure is quiet out here. Kind of lonely. No waves. You know, I often wonder what's swimming around underneath me here, too. <laughs> uh, hope there sure aren't any sharks. Oh no, oh no, way inside, wipe out! Dude, it's right over here. I wouldn't have made it without you. Oh, that 50 footer came from out of the blue, that was crazy. Thanks for saving me, Kelly. That was great, you got so pity. Oh. <laughs> from Ecclesiastes 4.12, the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Brothers and sisters, we need to walk with each other through all that life brings. Whether we're in our homes, at church, or even out at the beach, life is truly better when we are together. Encourage one another, 
especially now, the day of his return, is drawing near. Beautiful verse from Hebrews 10:25. And uh, in my uh, silly little video that I made, uh, you might remember the guy that kind of came up that kind of helped me. I reached out to this man that was on his board, and after my you know epic crash, <laughs> believe me, I've had a few of those. Not maybe not that type, but a dead man. But, uh, you know, he was the one that I, I kind of went, oh, thanks, Kel, you rescued me, oh, you saved me. You couldn't really hear what I was saying. And uh, he was uh, he's one of my best friends. And uh, I've shared this with a few of you, and it kind of just uh, kind of brings me to tears a little bit, because um, it wasn't soon after we moved that uh, Kel just decided, I got to go. And he moved away and just left his wife and his daughter. And uh, he hasn't even responded to me, to my calls or texts. And he's a wonderful man. He's leading a group in his home and things like that. And I guess it's a reminder, and I'm hoping still, I want to please pray for him. I hope you're going to see him someday. You can just welcome him in like anybody else. But um, it's a reminder how close are any of us or the people around us from anything that would just snap. Any situation, maybe any trial, and as I expressed earlier, uh, we are, many of us, and many in the world around us are at that point where what could be the thing that just is a breaking point? And uh, I know that we can all resonate with that in some degree or another, whether personally or those that we know and those that we love. And that's where, again, I'm reminded as I, I see what's happening here and I see these good things that are happening, I mean, get involved in a, in a community in a Bible study, in a fellowship, because we need, again, to be in the Word. We need to be with one another. And where are you going to go? Because it's not a matter of if, but when this trials come, isn't it? And where are you going to go when those challenging points come? Will you go to God's people? Will you go to friends that you know and that you trust in the Word and prayer and know that somebody has your back, that they will be there for you? Amen? So our reminder today at uh, Community of Unshakable Hope, because our hope is in the Lord and His Word, not in just me or you or anyone else. That's what's unshakable. God has promises to keep the main thing the main thing and stay focused as a lighthouse church. Love that image, that steeple, right? Uh, I, bet, so, I bet some of you are involved in even building that. Were any of you involved in building that or making sure it went up like that? Or I don't know. Maybe you've been here since this place got structure went out. But uh, I love that beacon, and then you can see on a, on a dark night, and there's activity happening here, the light is shining bright. And uh, look what Jesus says here. He says, you are the light of the world. Didn't he just say in the passage that we just read where Jesus said, I am the light of the world? But look at how this progresses. And if you uh, have your Bibles, we're just going to stay focused on this for a minute, but... You, you, you may remember this, this passage from Matthew 5 pretty well. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read that. And it's the context. is Matthew 5, where the Beatitudes, Jesus speaks the Beatitudes. Blessed are those, blessed are those, blessed merciful, pure in heart. Um, and then he goes on to say in verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. And then this passage I focused on, that I'd like to talk about for a moment, goes on to say... Jesus says to those following him and around him, he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand to give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So I love this transition that Jesus makes and he's looking at those who are following him and says, oh, You are. The light of the world. And you're not just bringing people light, but you, you are. And have, have you heard that before? And have you sensed that in others too, where people bring <coughs> Jesus through their care, through their love for somebody? They are literally being like Jesus to that person that's in need, to that person that's broken, to that person that's just lost a loved one. We really are. We bring Christ in us, the presence of God to those. And it's a beautiful thing, the way the church can be the church, the way God's people bless one another and bless the world. And you are the light of the world. 
And it's just what we do. It's, it's God in us. It's not us, but it's the Lord and His Holy Spirit in and through us. And uh, again, our, we're not to be hidden. We're out to be visible. We're out to be out in the world. Not just hidden inside here, but to be out shining the light. And um, think about uh, a candle. If you've been in a super dark room, power goes out. What does one little candle do? Lights up. Wow, I can see. I don't, I don't step over the, the tools that I left out there. Uh, night light. Or if literally, if it's a, that kind of thing, a power goes out, even a little candle, oh, I can see. And uh, in the Jewish times, in the Bible times of the Jewish people, when they were you know, following Jesus and trusting him, they could get this because they would know, right, when you light a candle, you don't just put it on the ground and hide it away. But it has to go up on a stand, and even a small candle in a room, if it's up higher, it will illuminate everything going down. And isn't that, isn't that a word for us, right? Be that light on a stand that, that gives light to everyone in the house or that glorifies as we, as we read here. Let your light shine, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So be, be renewed, be refilled. And keep the focus on what we are called to be about. These are our core vision, mission statements for our church. To know Christ's love, to grow in Christ's love, and to go out with Christ's love. It's right there what your church leaders have focused on over, I know, for many years. But be in worship, be in Bible study, be in these community groups, serve and give. And this is happening in so many ways. And keep that focus. I'd like to close with a, a story that I've heard before, and, and you've probably heard before, but I'm going to tell it again because it just speaks so clearly to what we're doing about. So there was a, a story about a lot of years ago. There was this uh, little village on this very rocky sea coast, and storms would sort of come up and go just kind of like on I mean, the Oregon coast, right? We've got lots of lighthouses and things like that. I mean, there's, there's storms, and there's uh, a lot of rocks, and um, and it happened to be that near this little village, a lot of ships were being destroyed, uh, driven onto the rocks by storms. Lives of sailors were lost. So the people said, we better do something. Let's build a lighthouse. Uh, let's build not only a lighthouse, but a life-saving station. So can I get back to Pastor Doug's lifeguard? In fact, you've got a lifeguard station, and you've got a lighthouse. So it warns the ships, and it saves those that, that end up getting dashed on the rocks. So they got the vision together, they approached all the right people, got some money, built the tower, uh, got a lookout system, bought boats, life-saving stations, so they, they were in they were in the business, and that's what they did. And it worked. The lights, the lighthouse, helped the ships navigate, stay away from the rocks. When it did happen, this crew was ready to go, and they would get in their boats, they would get in the water, they plucked the sailors out that were in danger at sea, and it was working. People's lives were being saved, and people would come to this little life station to learn about. We need to have this down at our, down the coast of our city, too, because that's the same thing's happening. So they were, it was like a model of what to do to save lives. So, uh, you know, it's working well. People start to get excited about this. They end up going to the lighthouse for fellowship, and, and they build their homes near the lighthouse, and, and alarm sound, sound, they go out uh, pretty soon. They're spending a lot of time at the lighthouse. Well, hey, this is a great place. Let's expand it a little bit. Let's make it comfortable. Let's put some couches here. Uh, let's, let's make a kitchen in there. Let's paint it really nice. Put some rugs. And hey, this is lighthouse is a hub. Saving lives. Uh, people would like to just be there and hang out. And, you know, your friends were there. It was a great place to be. And uh, there was another storm then that blew in. Lots of, it was, the lighthouse couldn't even see distract the people or distract the ships from going the right way. It's just that they were dashed on the rocks. A lot of storm, a lot of uh, sailors had to be picked out of the water. And uh, people were kind of, oh no, how can we do this? It was kind of hard. Some people were getting angry with each other. Oh, we gotta go out outside. The lighthouse is so cozy and warm. Oh, I, I don't know if I got time to do this. I, I'm gonna stay, you go out. Well, as it went on, they brought in the all the sailors that were lost at sea, they brought them in, and well, they had to beat them, and then the kitchen got all messy, and well, they were all muddy and dirty, and then the lighthouse got all dirty, and, and oh, let's take them down to the basement, they don't, we don't want to wreck our, our nice, cozy little lighthouse here, and uh, so that's, that mentality started to creep in, and then another storm blew in, half the men went out in the boats, some didn't want to go out, it was cold, 
uh, people were actually from another country, even uh, spoke different languages. And oh, well, wait a minute, who are these people not coming in to the lighthouse? Uh, well, I thought we were just saving our own here. And uh, they were objecting further times, not wanting to go out. And there were disagreements. And then, oh, well, let's just keep the lighthouse lit, but we're not going to do any of that life saving stuff anymore. We're not going to go out in the water. It's too cold. And, and it gets our lighthouse so messed up. Uh, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a group that disagreed. And they went down the coast a short distance and started a new lighthouse. The lighthouse was booming. Lives were being saved. They needed it. And it ended up being this. It's a small group that ran the new lighthouse were those that were once rescued from the stormy seas themselves. And I love this story. And it just speaks, it's timeless. I'm sure some of you have heard it before. Maybe you've heard, oh yeah, it's one of my pastors spoke five years ago or whatever. But it, the, main, the main question for us today, and uh, as I think about this theme that we're going to go through, Will we remain a mission or become a museum? And I pray the community of hope will be a saving lighthouse church for generations. So as we reflect on this and think about what we're doing, right? We're in the we're in the lighthouse right now, aren't we? <laughs> but we don't just stay here. And you guys have been doing that. And you're out there with the royal family uh, kids camp, and you're all these prayer walks and all this good stuff and. Uh, all these things are happening, but isn't that the continued edge that we need to be on? Saying, let's be a lighthouse church, and let's be character have those characteristics that we're going to talk about more over these weeks that really exist, that we exist to seek and save the lost. Yes, we're going to encourage one another. We're going to be in the Word. We're going to worship and study, and hopefully we'll be bringing in folks and, and welcoming them and giving them God's love. And we're also going to be going out. To bless the world in need, to be that light in the world. What did Jesus say? You are. You are the light of the world. And so, uh, one of my my prayer is that that would be a consistent uh, characteristic of us, being filled with Jesus' hope and light, reflecting Jesus to Wilsonville, to all the world. To as we did a little look out at the property yesterday, there were some guys that were. Taking a look at the barn, looking at the land that's going in, all the changes that are happening. And, yeah, there's going to be people in there. They're not all going to be just like us either. Lots of different ages, probably cultures, nationalities. Let's that's, that's welcome the right? Let's welcome the world and bless the world just as Jesus has called us. This is a picture of that prayer walk. This is a great <laughs> image because it was not just our church, but it was Horizon. It was Grace Chapel. And, you can see this whole variety of folks there. That was a great image of, of being the church, even in that little group, as we went out uh, just about a week ago. So I'd like to pray, and as we conclude with the last couple uh, uh, verses from Amazing Grace, let's just lead in prayer, and we'll continue with prayer for the needs of others. So Father, we thank you for uh, this call. Thank you for this reminder. And Lord, for any that are in need, uh, bless uh, for those that are here today. Uh, we all just want to be rebuilt and renewed. And may your amazing grace continue to guide us and be our source so that we can extend that.